So you want to start a cafe. I think you're going to be working a couple hours a day. Probably, you know, make a few beautiful cafes. Play with some matcha tea. Laugh with some cute customers. You know, leave, collect some money. And just kind of own the coffee shop that everyone loves doing their homework at and clear 100000 a year. Yeah, that sounds good and all. But it's not true. And unfortunately, it's going to take a while to get there. But I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm just saying it usually doesn't. And I want to keep it real on this channel. And that's what it's all about. So thank you for watching. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Thanks for coming back to this channel. It's a very slow Sunday at my shop. And I kind of wanted to give you my insight on the... See, this cooler just turned on now I gotta wait so if you're new here I've been running this shop for about five years now we added a coffee bar to the mix about three years ago we didn't spend too much and here's another customer basically I added a coffee bar to my existing grocery store we added a, a machine we added two machines at one point one's currently down for the count but we added espressos, cappuccinos, lattes, americanos, any espresso based drink um, we added and we found a very good response because people were already in our store therefore they pick up a coffee and then there was other people that just came in for a takeout coffee which is fine they would grab a pastry or dessert we have always really carried pastry desserts right at the front so it made sense to kind of open up our own coffee shop at the front it was just another stream of revenue. It was probably the best and easiest way for us to attract those coffee lovers, those coffee drinkers. And uh, you know, it, the margins are quite high on selling a coffee as long as you have good volume. So speaking of coffee, we eventually paired with a roaster to build our own brand, 13grandcoffee.com. And this is the coffee that we serve every day in house. It's our very own you know, personal brand. We're really happy with it. Thank you to anyone who has tried it. If you're interested in trying it, you can hit the link down below. 13grandcoffee.com. It's probably the best tasting smooth espresso you're ever going to try. And I'm allowed to say that. You're allowed to say that, right? You can believe that you have the best product. That's what you're going to want to tell all your customers. Best coffee, freshest coffee, best products, freshest, you know, produce. Whatever it is, it's the best. Don't undermine yourself that's the first thing i can ever tell you about when you open any business especially a coffee shop you're gonna obviously have to say you're the best even if you don't personally believe it which you should because you're going into business to be the best you have to say you're the best so step number one would be identifying your concept as many of you have already noticed my concept is simply take out coffee i added it to my current business model which is a grocery store and created a coffee shop concept just from that. Now your concept may be a sit down cafe, a high end cafe, a Asian inspired cafe, or you know, you name it, you need to find your niche concept. You can't be everything to everybody. And that's why, you know, we offer our select roast beans to pair with our grocery. That's my concept. I did a takeout style cafe and it's worked uh, out greatly to add to my revenue and you know not a lot of people like that when they think of how to open a cafe or coffee shop they you know want the more sit down feel with the pastries but just know that you need to really dive deep into your concept you cannot compete with tim hortons or starbucks i wouldn't even suggest it you're going to be something on your own the prices will be higher than tim hortons and mcdonald's for sure and this is going to boil into everything that your business will be who is your customer what are they willing to spend? Are you offering gourmet coffee to millennials or high-end coffee to people who are coffee connoisseurs? Will you be offering food? Like I highly suggest to offer food to bring up your average sale. Will you be doing takeout service only? Will you offer you know, full seating? Will you do a lunch menu, a breakfast menu? What kind of pastries? Or is it a full-on breakfast uh, cafe? These are things you really have to sit down and narrow down to what you think will work best for your target customer. Your concept will be something that makes or breaks you. So choose it wisely and really narrow it down. I'm looking forward to hearing any ideas 
in the comment section below. After you identified your concept, step two is your location. Now this will be very tied into how much money you can spend on your rent every month. The lower the rent, most likely the worse the location. If you have some deep pockets, the higher the rent, the better the location. So if you're willing to spend 3,000 to 4,000 a month on your rent, you can expect a very highly visible location, a lot of foot traffic, maybe near a university or a mall or you know a downtown kind of upper end area. Just know that you will be paying the big bucks in order to have that high level visibility. Now that doesn't mean with a cheaper location you can't do well in your business. Well, you're gonna take more time to get to that level. It's gonna take more word of mouth, more marketing, you know, and more just kind of being consistent with your product to build that well-oiled machine than it would in a high traffic location with a higher rent. So really budget, you know, what you can afford with your location and see, you know, what you can find. I wouldn't say get married to any specific location because you love the look, but rather be very analytical, work out the numbers and see if it's a good value for your monthly rent. Because unfortunately, you're gonna be doing this for years to come and leases are usually between three to 10 years when you sign a commercial lease in our area anyways. So you wanna really calculate, not based on emotion, and if you love the look of the space, but rather if you can make any real money in the location. Step three is a very important part of starting any business. The cost it's going to take you to get from idea to opening day. Now, don't think that you just have to pay the rent when you rent the space out. If the space isn't finished, you're gonna have to pay the build out cost. For example, my space just cost over $90,000 to build. You've seen it in this video, you know, you've seen it in other videos that it's not very complex. We have some coolers, we have some, some shelves, we have, you know, a few coffee machines, a couple freezers. The main things that will cost you money is your coffee machine, your walk-in cooler if you need one. You know, generally speaking, you'll need a display cooler. These things will all add up much faster than you think. Certain things like, you know, electrical, tiling, plumbing, all have to be considered. These are your costs that, you know, your landlord doesn't pay usually unless you can work out some sort of magical deal with them. Or you find a space that is already a cafe that went out of business. Unfortunately for them, they went out of business. But fortunately for you, you save on a lot of costs. And maybe you take over their lease or maybe, you know, you buy their business at a lower cost. It's a really uh, interesting way to start a cafe. Probably the most feasible, but you have to wonder why did this current location not work out? How am I gonna be different than this cafe that went out of business if I'm going to take over this space? So step three being your cost is probably one of the things that you will need to either save for, find a financial you know, investor, that will help you uh, get the appropriate money to start your business or a business loan if you're qualified. Well, after that is all said and done and the space is ready to go, you've done everything you needed, your lighting, your equipment, the renovations, just know you want to have enough money to float you for the first six months to a year before you make any profit. There's many, many businesses that I know personally that started with not enough money to keep themselves afloat during those lean first few months that you really don't make any money at all or you know don't have any customers yet, right? Because you're so new. So just keep that in mind. You need an extra amount on top of your renovation costs to keep you afloat for at least a year, preferably two years. Okay, step four would be the marketing of your business. How are you gonna market the business so people know about you every single day? Without the proper marketing plan, I can tell you right now, people will forget about you week to week unless they're your loyal, loyal customers. Those loyal customers are your regulars that will come into, come into your shop maybe one to two, maybe three times a week, or maybe every day, depending how much coffee you know they really consume from you. Now, with that being said, there's a whole vast majority of the population that don't know a thing about you yet so you need to build a brand that you can market that sticks with 
the customer base that you're looking for as much as possible. Marketing will come from online methods, offline methods, and you know, a matter of fact, one thing that you can't control, which is very po powerful, is the word of mouth. So people telling other people how great of, the exper of an experience they had at your shop, the quality of your product, the customer service, and those all go into marketing because you want to build that brand that people trust, the brand that is consistent, and the brand that just everybody kind of knows exists in that area. You do this by using Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all those online methods which are potentially going to be 100% free unless you add on you know, to your paid methods. But these are all vehicles that get you in front of your customer without much investment. Basically, you know, taking pictures of people enjoying your coffee, taking pictures of your product, you know, the outside of your shop, new features, new sales, you name it, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, email marketing. Those are things you're going to have to invest a lot of time in for the first two to three years to build that well-oiled machine. And then you're gonna have to keep investing into that to build that loyal customer base that spends their money with you and not the coffee shop down the street. So it's a very interesting game marketing because it can really pay off if done right and it can truly make or break your business if you do not do it properly. Part of marketing that people forget is the building of their brand. You know, everything needs to be consistent, you know, with the experience that people have. The logo creation matches you know, the even something down to the logo on the coffee cup matching, you know, the decor in the room. And who is your customer really kind of, what is your customer feeling as they come in? This is all part of your brand, you know. This is something that covers all five senses, what they see, hear, taste, the music that's being played. So building that brand is its own form of marketing that you will learn as you go but in this video to give you an example you know you really want to start with building a brand that people can trust while you build the coffee shop that you're trying to uh, achieve number five is a point that i think is often overlooked but you need experience in the business before opening the business and a lot of people don't want to hear this because they don't want to have to put in the grunt work of working in a cafe for minimum wage and you know dealing with more bosses other staff members being treated kind of you know like a uh, being treated rough by customers because unfortunately in this day and age pe people don't respect minimum wage workers like they should but you need that experience to truly know what it takes to run a coffee shop. I'm talking at least one year where you are running all different parts of someone else's coffee shop to be able to learn how to run your own. It goes without saying that you will know if you truly enjoy doing this every day, day in and day out, probably even longer than you were when you were an employee because when you're an owner of a cafe, you'll most likely be putting in 12 to 13 hour days and this will give you the proper experience and insight to know if you truly like doing this at all. After about six months of working in a cafe and you say, you know what, I don't actually like doing this, then you saved yourself a bunch of time, money, risks, leases, and a bunch of other headaches by not starting the business that you had no passion in starting in the first place. So step six would be staffing. Now with finding the appropriate staff, in general, in the restaurant business, there's a high turnover rate, basically due to you know lack of proper wages and a slew of other things where people want to jump from restaurant to restaurant to find the best suited place. It's going to be hard to find loyal staff. I will tell you that right now that nobody will care about your place as much as you do. And the coffee shop business is very labor intensive that you won't be able to run it on your own if anyone is thinking that. As soon as the place gets busy and you're making one coffee and you have a lineup, you need other people to help you out. And you need that staff that is constantly not having to be retrained because they're so new. 
this will be a battle in itself managing people you know you may not be able to hire much more than one or two staff members for a very long time this business is a you know low margin business at the end of the day with all the overhead and the expenses that come with it adding on to you know paying someone an actual livable wage is going to really cut into your profits for the first year or two and that will that uh, that will hurt your business if if you're not steady and busy at all times so keep that in mind if uh, you can start with a business partner you guys are both dedicated to the business and uh, can start a little bit more lean and hiring a bunch of staff that you can't afford staffing in general you want to find people that have experience from other coffee shops that are you know decent behind the bar and kind of can get by without constantly being you know told what to do and are kind of self-motivated because at the end of the day if you have staff at your place you don't want to have to be constantly watching over them and kind of sometimes don't want to be there at all so they can kind of take the reins right this is where it gets challenging to find that, that qualified person and paying them enough to actually stick with you for the long-term game. And I have heard from countless small business owners, cafes, frozen yogurt shops, convenience stores, on the amount of you know freebies that go out the door, stealing that comes out of the till. You know the money's just the money just disappears by the end of the night of everything taken from an event. So just keep in mind you want to find trustworthy people that are qualified that have worked in a in a coffee shop before. It's not mandatory that they've worked in a coffee shop before, but it will save you a lot of headache because people kind of have this glamorized idea of what it's like working in a coffee shop that, you know, they'll make some beautiful latte art and everyone will treat them with uh, the most respect that they wouldn't find at another job. So just, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a battle. Let's just put it that way. I'm gonna end this video here, guys. Thank you for watching and thank you for following this channel. I hope to provide some value on starting your own small business, whether it be a cafe, a store like mine, a restaurant. This is what we do on this channel and I really uh, appreciate you guys watching.